Hi, I'm Ashley from Sunny Made, and today we are going to learn how to make flying geese. Welcome back. We are on week two, month three of our beginner skill builder sampler quilt. Oh man, that's a mouthful. Um, this is the block we are going to be making and today I'm going to teach you a new way to make flying geese. Last week we talked about four at a time half square triangles. That's right here. Um, this week we're going over our flying geese. And next week, I am going to do a, t a tip tutorial about um, ironing. Um, this particular method, they call it the Eleanor Burns um, flying geese method. It's actually my favorite. I just like how easy it is and it's just uncomplicated. And I don't know. I just have a fa everybody has to have a favorite, right? So this is my favorite. Um, so I'm going to show you how to make it. A lady named Eleanor Burns came up with this particular method, which is why it's named after her. So, um, let me tell you, I know we're going to, I'm going to tell you how to do the math on this. I know this is going to be a little bit crazy in your head sometimes, but I like math. So this is actually kind of fun for me. We are going to have a finished size of six and a half by three and a half inches. Okay, that's our, technically our unfinished size. That's how big they're gonna be when we have them all trimmed up. So this is how we decide what we're gonna do. Our white background piece, that's gonna go here in the V. What you do is you take that six and a half inches and you add an inch and a half, and that will give you eight inches and you make a square that is eight inches. Square, one, one, all the way around. Add another inch and a half, which gives you nine and a half inches, and then you want a square that is that nine and a half inches. These are going to be the points. I'm trying to keep the colors all the same so you know exactly what we're doing. So, points, nine and a half inches. Background fabric is eight inches square. You just need one of each of them and we're gonna end up with four flying geese at the end. What else do you need? Um, rotary cutter, pins, because this is so big, I would recommend pins. You're gonna need a writing utensil because we're gonna be drawing a line down the middle. Um, cutting mat, a ruler, both to cut it and to trim it. So we're gonna trim it down to the six and a half by three and a half at the end. Sewing machine, I'm doing white thread on my sewing machine and of course an iron. So let's get started. Grab your supplies and let's get started. Okay, we are gonna place our fabric with the points. In our case, it is the pattern fabric down on our cutting mat with the pattern size side up. We are then gonna put our background fabric, the point part, this triangle part, background, I'm using white. It is just gonna lay right there on top of the pattern fabric. If you have two patterns, you're gonna put pattern to pattern down on top of each other. Okay, this is where I'm going to pin it. It doesn't have to be perfect, okay? Um, if you don't get it exactly in the middle, it doesn't matter. But this is how it's gonna look. You're gonna have the pattern fabric coming around the edges and your background fabric right there. Then we are going to draw a diagonal line from corner to corner. Corner to corner of the white, particularly. 
Now this is where you can see if you're off a little bit. And like I said, if you are off, it's okay. No big deal. Just as long as it's really close. Then just like our half square triangles, we're gonna sew a quarter inch down each side of that seam. Let me give you a close up so you can see what we're doing. Okay, we have our pattern side fabric on the table first. This is the one that we're doing the points. On the table, face up, we're putting our background fabric here, right on top of it. Okay, I am gonna pin this into place. This is a rather big piece, um, couple pieces of fa fabric. Okay, I'm gonna take my ruler, go corner to corner on this background fabric, and I'm gonna draw a line. I'm just using a pencil here. You just need something that you can see. Okay, now we're gonna do a quarter inch down one side and down the other. What you'll probably do is put it on here, put it down, you're gonna flip it around on your sewing machine and do it right down the other side. You do not have to go all the way to the points on each end. You just need to get it to the edge of the white and then you'll be good to go. Okay, we have our piece here. It is now sewn down the middle, just a quarter inch there on each side. Okay, we're going to take our ruler and we are gonna cut it right down that line that we wrote, we drew on the fabric. This time we are actually gonna make sure that we cut all the way through the green fabric. Whoops. The green fabric as well as the background fabric. Okay, so now you have two pieces. They are a little wonky, but that's okay. Let's pull out our iron and let's get them ironed. Okay, we're gonna hit it with the seam. We're gonna hit the seam with the iron Finger press that whole thing open. Now the flatter you can get this, the better your flying geese are gonna turn out. Okay, run that iron over the top of this other one. Okay, set the seam. Make sure that seam is nice and flat. Okay. Okay, we now have our two pieces that look like this. So, super easy. You're gonna place one just like this. The other one's gonna go, this is the pattern sides up. This one, the pattern sides down you're going to line up the corners, okay? We don't wanna line up the middle seams, we wanna line up these corners on top and bottom. Okay, let's pin it. And once again, we're going to take our ruler, we're gonna draw a line, corner to corner. And we're gonna sew a quarter inch down, down each side of that seam. I'm gonna put a few more pins in here so it stays nice and flat, so it doesn't move around when I'm sewing it. We have it sewn now down each line of, each side of that line. Let's pull all our pins out. And once again, we are going to cut it right down that line. We have our two pieces. It is time now to iron them. We're gonna set the seam. Finger press it open. Make sure you get that seam nice and tight, and then run your iron back over it. Second one. Okay. 
Okay, we have gotten to the point where we are done sewing. Now it's time to trim these babies. Let me grab a square. I think it'll be easier if I do. Okay, it is now time to trim. What we have here is you're gonna actually get two flying geese from each of these, so we'll end up with four. Okay, I'm gonna first start with this one right here. What I wanna do is I want to line my diagonal up with an edge with one of these lines. Now we want a quarter inch seam allowance, so we want the bottom of it to extend a quarter inch beyond that point. So what I'm gonna do is line it up, and as you can see, it's about a quarter inch from the edge. I'm going to run my rotary cutter right along that edge. So here we have the beginning of our flying geese. Okay, next I want to trim this to three and a half by six and a half. So I'm gonna use this square. This square is six and a half inches. So that's the exact width I want my flying geese to be. So I'm going to line the diagonal up once again along that flying geese edge. Half of six and a half is three and a quarter. So I'm gonna put that three and a quarter dot and three and a quarter dot right in the point of my flying geese, which means it should line up here right along the three and a half inches. This should line up and then you should have your dot right down there in the point. Next, I'm gonna go one side. Okay, and I'm gonna go the other side, at the top. Then last, I only have one other side to do. I'm gonna line this up over on this edge and the bottom, which means it should line up here, here, and here. And then we have a six and a half wide square. So you have a six and a half inch wide flying geese. And then we're just gonna continue to do that for all of our flying geese. Okay, we're going to line it up along that diagonal, find that quarter inch from the edge. Here's our little middle part. And then I'm gonna use a ruler Place that with the point, the dot right in the point, and the diagonal lined up. Side, top, and then one last side. Now I do wanna show you a little trick I learned using a different ruler that makes it pretty easy. Now these, um, flying geese are bigger than <laughs> the edge of my ruler. As you can see, I broke it. But I like this one because it has a nice point here and it stops at that quarter inch from the edge. So this is kind of cool. Even though this is used for half square triangles, I like this because I can grab it, line it up with the V of my flying geese. And then I can, if it was not broken, it would be the right size. It gives me that perfect quarter inch with, that, with the V in the middle of it. And then I would just line it up with the second one. Yep, wish it was longer. Wish I hadn't broken it, right? Yes, that's what happens. And then I would just need to come back and finish squaring it up. Okay. 
And our last one. Now, one of the things I would like to point out is that I don't always get my V here in the middle to be, oh, I lost my rule for a second, to be that perfect V like it is here. And you know, sometimes one has a different angle depending on how I sewed, sewed it. That's part of the reason I like this one is because it gives me that perfect V a lot easier than the other styles. And so then what would I do? I would either, I would still line up um, the three and a half at that point. You want to make sure that you keep the point right at the halfway mark. So I still want to line up three and a half by three and a half, or three and a quarter by three and a quarter. So that point is right there in the middle. Then I would adjust my ruler so that it won't always line up with this, but that it's centered. I hope that makes sense. I wish I had one that was off so that I could show you. Um, I guess this one is kind of off now that I'm looking at it from this direction. And so then I would line it up here, do the best I could to make it fit within the V, and then trim it up. All right, we are all done trimming up our flying geese. You should now have four flying geese to go in our next quilt block. Um, once again, these are called the Eleanor Burns Method. I hope you like them. Tell me what you think. Give me a comment down in the comment section. Next week, we will be talking about ironing. I just wanna give you a few tidbits, a few terminologies on and how to make your ironing flatter and make your block smoother. And we're gonna go over that. I'm gonna show you a couple different ways and what I prefer but I will also give you some other options. So make sure you subscribe and come back next week as we talk about ironing and I will see you next week.